we go. We're live. Oh, wow. Exciting. <laughs> Hi, everybody. It's Eileen, and I have a special visitor here. This is my sister-in-law, Holly. This is my husband's sister, and um, I asked her if she would come and tell you about one of the traditions in our family. Hey, Charlotta. She's from Sweden. Oh, wonderful. I know. She is always... Hey, Laura. <laughs> I have a special guest today. Isn't that fun? Surprise. Hey, Ulrika. So how are you guys doing? Everybody good? Oh, I actually, yeah, I know. They have little hearts. They're all saying hi. Oh, hi, Holly. So cute. <laughs> hey, Tracy and Jane. Terry, how's it going? Michelle, did you get your package yet, Michelle? Hi, Holly. I live in Holly, Michigan. Hmm. How about that? <laughs> There's Tracy Hay saying hey. <laughs> hi, Debbie. She's down in Georgia. Ulrika's from. Um, um, Germany and she and I traveled through London together yeah that was an experience so anyway yes we actually I am organized today guys you're not gonna believe it look what we're gonna make we probably won't get it all done but it is so much fun Kelly Holly look at this you were meant <laughs> to be here <laughs> so the reason that I invited Holly to come is because she well tell tell what all happened it's your mom all right, Holly's going to tell you the story about what she made and how it happened. So my mom was a lifelong knitter. She started when she was about 11 or 12. Oh. She met a, a lady who worked at the Newark Library, and she was fascinated by the woman knitting all the time. And my mom was a real tomboy and a dirty mess, like when she was little. <laughs> and the lady at the library said, I'll make you a deal. If you can keep your hands clean, I will teach you how to knit. I yeah. didn't know that. Yeah, okay. and so she taught my mom how to knit, and she became a lifelong knitter, and she knitted many projects, including a beautiful Aran Irish knit sweater for me and a number of things. But the thing that she knitted the most was the Christmas stockings with the Santa Claus face and the names knitted into them and in Tarja. And so we figure she must have knitted oh, hundreds, yeah, hundreds, hundreds of them yeah. over the years. And if yeah. anyone did her a kindness, she would say, I will knit, I'll knit you a stocking. Yes, or what can. are your kids' names? I will knit them stockings. Yeah. And, and so, the, through, or the Garden State Parkway people. Right, right. Yeah. She worked on the Garden State Parkway for a period of time. And, yeah. you know, if she met people through the parkway, she would knit them stockings. And she was always, always knitting a stocking in addition That's to true. many, many other crafts that she mm -hmm. did. And she had taught me to knit when I was about the same age, around 11 or 12, but it never really stuck with me. And we, we weren't great working on projects together. <laughs> but I can't imagine why. I always, <laughs> I always wanted to pick up knitting again and carry on mom's legacy because she had knitted stockings for all of our family members. So I, like I have them for myself, my husband, our children. Mm -hmm. Eileen had them for all of her yeah. children. But then when my mom had a stroke a couple of years before she died, she was no longer able to use her right hand and, and knit. And so starting with the very last grandchild of my mom's, she no longer had a stocking. So I was like, oh, I have got to, yeah. I've got to learn to knit again and uh, you know, find a way to learn to make these stockings. So I hadn't done that, and I hadn't done that, and then I retired and moved to Nashville, Tennessee, which we really love, and now I had time, and so I went to a knit shop, and I asked, uh, do you know, I have a pattern for the Santa Claus face stockings with the names, do you have knitters who would knit those for me, because <laughs> my, my niece needs one, and her mom, and they said, oh yeah, yeah, $250, oh, and I oh, said, I wow. Two hundred fifty dollars per stocking. It's oh, it's a, it's a lot of time involved, <laughs> and it's very, you know, intricate, yeah. and it requires at least intermediate, if not advanced, knitting skills. So I thought, oh my gosh, well, we need so many of them. Yeah, that's, that's just true. cost prohibitive. So perhaps I should really learn to yeah. knit. <laughs> yeah. So okay. I spent a good uh, six months um, in class with this woman once a week, learning how to knit in many different stitches and making an afghan as a sampler. And then when I was done with that. I was really almost already at an intermediate level of knitting, and I thought, okay, I'll try to tackle the stockings. Go. So I did, she did, and it's been a bit of a success. I've yeah. been able to do them. They're beautiful. Yeah, and here's um, 
a completed stocking that Isn't it pretty, um, guys? I'm providing Hi, to Jane. my um, my doctor tomorrow. I'm here in town to visit with my doctor from years ago. So you've got Santa Claus face on both sides of the stocking, yeah. and then the name is knitted, you know, along the top and in tarsia. Uh, and um, I also have knitted nine now for all of Eileen's <laughs> grandchildren and um, new additions to the family. Uh, so I owe you three three <laughs> yeah. significant others, yeah. two significant uh -huh. others, and three seven big. grandchildren. Oh, right? right, starting yeah, with Trinity. Not, yeah. So, wow. um, so it's been uh, three significant others and six six grandchildren. Wow. So, so total, how many have you made? Now? I made because uh, your kids. I made 13. Wow. I made 13. And how many hours did each one take you? Ethan? So the first one took about 35 hours. Oh. And then the second one took about 25 hours. Wow. And then when I started with your nine, um, I gave myself two weeks per stocking to try to get them yeah, done okay. before Christmas. But it turned out that I was getting them done in about a week of knitting oh, two to three hours a day. So about, about, 20, about 20 hours altogether with the finished work yeah. and washing and you know yeah. sewing and adding wow. on the loops and the bells and wow. getting to our finished they look just like product. your mom's yeah. did yeah same exact pattern my mom yeah. used um, well, a couple your tiny mom, little differences but <laughs> she made some that were bigger than others yeah maybe why. like maybe. jess's is huge oh really i don't know why maybe she used yeah. a different gauge or she needle. might have stretched it out who knows oh i don't know yeah. i don't yeah. know but yeah well, eileen asked isn't me that if I cool would guys show that to you i know it is so special thank you holly You're welcome. i owe you man <laughs> <laughs> well you'll get yours tonight our son's delivering them to me yeah. tonight yeah, so cool. eileen will have all of hers for her yes. family so it was well. very nice to talk with you yes. and meet you all and uh i know that you you know, love working with the incomparable Eileen well. Hull. Uh, she's just great. Well, thanks, Hull. So, thanks for coming. Thanks for having me. All right. Anytime. Bye, good to see you. Aw. Is that good? Yeah. That, that was right. great. Thank okay. you. Take care. Yay, Holly. Nine stockings. Would you guys say I owe her or what? That's amazing. Yes. They're all saying good to meet you. They love you. <laughs> Oh, your mom's a knitter, Debbie. I, my mom's a knitter, too. Oh, Jenny Atkinson. She's from the Shetland Islands. And talk about a knitter. Man, Holly, you should meet her. Well, anyway, I was really happy that Holly would show you because, um, you know, it just shows how important working with your hands is and passing things down. And, uh, you know, video games, what's ever, that ever going to come to? You know, yeah, 250 times 9. Oh, that's not even counting the materials. So, she's a good sister-in-law. Yeah. So anyway, guys, from yarn to paper. All right, so here's what we're going to make today and make some journals for her to use. I did, actually. She was telling me that she, um, I had made her a leather. She loves purple, so I made her a little tassel and just like a little keychain thing last year or a uh, luggage tag holder, which was... Nothing compared to the <laughs> huge amount of time that she spent with us, but hopefully someday it'll even out. <laughs> Who knows? So um, let's get going on this. I'm just getting it up on the computer because uh, it takes a little while, okay? This, it's not hard at all. You're going to use your pocket notebook die, which uh, is your book. It's your book, but what we did was we closed it in and made like a little uh, bottom for it, and then I made a snowman out of a flower die. So let's uh, get going and, and make that. So I'm gonna turn the camera down in a minute. Ah, all right. I need to be careful. Yay, another transfer. You wouldn't believe am every time it works. <laughs> so let's see if I have any, if I can get in the thing here. So this is the, um, this is the project. I don't see it on here. Hmm. Let me refresh it. So what I did was I used it for cards and the cards would be kind of a separate thing. I made them using also the pocket notebook, but uh, 
I made cards to fit because I knew they would fit inside. So they're not done yet, but I just kind of had fun putting together some papers that I had from Paper House. And uh, so this is a work in progress, but this is what I thought that I would use it for is cards. But you could use it for anything. If you had a gift, you know, like a jewelry gift or I don't know, some nice... Uh, earrings or cookies or if you made a set of cards I mean it's really cute so let me see I still can't find it here ah. um, oh there we go okay so oh, and take my sorry guys so many controls <laughs> all right so what we're gonna do is we're going to take the pocket notebook die and we're going to cut two of these and then we're going to cut a strip um, and at the first one I did I used this piece but um, this time I'm just going to go ahead and and make a little gusset for the inside so you can see how you could do that and this would work in any of the books really you could use it to make a bottom for it so if you wanted to make something maybe a little chunkier you could use the wrap journal and make a bottom for that um, so I'm gonna do that and then the snowman we're gonna make out of this romance flower die uh, you can see uh, this comes with four different sizes so you could make you know medium small smaller you could do this 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 I wound up using the large medium small and then I did not use that one um, I used a couple branches from a tree. I just cut a scrap of map board and colored it for his nose. I cut a piece for his hat. And then these were uh, pieces from the floral arch die. And this friend came from that same set. So, um, and then the background I made using the blends. And I just did a very simple smushing technique. And then I added these little pearly things. or I don't know what you call them. Little flat back dots. So let's get going on this just so you can see how and you're going to probably get the basic idea. I don't know how much I'll get through. I guess if you know I think you can figure it out but if not we could go ahead and do another uh, live showing the rest of it. But what I'm going to do is take my extended cutting pad put that underneath. I'm going to die cut two of these pieces and then it's really cool. I'll show you how that works. I could have cut these ahead of time, but I was upstairs. Holly offered to bring me a sandwich, and I said, yes, that would be great. So I got a, a Jimmy John sandwich, <laughs> and we talked and caught up. So didn't get the prep quite as much, but I do feel like this is more than I ever get done ahead of time, so I'm still ahead of the game. All right, here's one. And I do have to use two different pieces because it's just a little bit too big to get two out of one sheet of mat board. But that's all right because we're going to use the scrap to make the, fl um, well, the flower slash snowman. All right, let's just cut them all so we have them done uh, and we can get to t go to town. All right, and I'm just going to switch this out get my flower put that on here and I really only need this small cutting pad for this one and let's cut this and then the others I think I have the little fl floral arches or I can just kind of talk you through that that's not hard all right now one thing I am gonna do well, let's get the box put together first. Okay, so there's our snowman. <laughs> with the photo storage die. Yes, it would. And Jane, actually, that is made to do it. But I was looking at this and I just thought, you know, we can make a little pocket out of this thing. Oh, your kitties are all saying hi. That's good. Hey, this is streaming today. Must be in a good mood. Thank you, Facebook. All right, so what we're gonna do to make our box is really very easy. We're going to bend this over on this score line and on the last score line. And what I normally would do is put that over my table 
and bend it there just because it is easier to apply all the pressure at one time and then you're going to fold it over all the way all right so you're breaking those fibers down so there's one here's two and then you're going to use your red liner tape from thermo web and we're going to put this together all right so all we're going to do is we're just going to take the shape and we're going to use the binding as a uh, tab to put our box together all right so we're just going to attach the two bindings so let's start doing that and then now i could what i did on this one was i um I used the blues, the two blues from the clear snap inks, and I smushed the color on there and to make the background. You could do whatever you wanted. You could put like um, paper, you know, you could just put paper on this and then die cut it as a background. That works too. You could use fabric, you know, all the things that we like to try. But this, this is what came out today, and we still had a little snow while I was. Um, thinking about it so it kind of put me in the mood <laughs> it's, it's I love snow all right so here is you have the same exact computer mouse <laughs> Wendy we're twins all right so the easiest thing is I think to stand it up like this then you get it flat and just kind of fiddle with it until you get it you know wherever it's comfortable for you to see what's going on here just try to get the top and bottom together just like that okay there's one and then you're just going to take the tape off here and same thing just put it over here so you can see where it's supposed to go like that okay and then you know just smooth it down this looks really close. Is this okay, guys? Is, is this really too close? I don't know. My hands are a mess. They're very dry. <laughs> so let's see. All right, so we have that done. Let's make our little, I don't know what you want to call it, tab, I guess. All right, and the w I'll show you how I did this just so that if you want to adapt this to another project, it'll be easy. All right, so I'm gonna use my blade. Now this one I got at the dollar store. I don't like this as much, it's very rattly. I got one at Harbor Freight and it, I like it a lot better. You're gonna need a ruler, pencil. And so what we're gonna do is I gave it a half an inch uh, here. I want my inside tab to be that. And then let's hold this up here and see how much we need to flap over and then I'm just going to go in a little bit and the reason for that is that this here takes up space so you don't want to do it exactly as wide because then it's going to kind of cave in trust me <laughs> I've done a lot of dies and and I've made a lot of mistakes so just give it ease it in a little bit so what you're going to do is then just line it up and then we're going to score this and to do that you're just going to make very light um, passes with your knife and I think that should be good yeah and then kind of feel it and see if it feels like it's it's gonna move then you're good okay then just go over here now if you wanted to trim this off you could do that too but we're gonna we're gonna trim the end off so I'm gonna wait and do that at the end all right and just keep this parallel you just want to have this parallel and do that okay so the, this works great all right, so now we've got this little insert here. So let's test it and see. Now, all right, that is a little wide. All right, so I'm going to do another pass over here and just kind of, I could do another one, but it's only a tiny bit different. I'm going to, and then we can just kind of roll it down. Really, we just want this to catch anything that might fall out. So. My first try was a winner, but that was two hours ago, so. <laughs> All right, 
So see, the reason I don't like to do this is because then it's hard to fold this over because it's so close to the other one, but you know, I don't feel like doing another one. So this is going to all be tucked in, so it's not going to matter what this looks like. All right, let me just do this here over my edge. Okay. All right, now the other thing that I'm going to do, and I only discovered this after I did the first one, um, you're going to see these little notch things here. So what I did was I cut out just on two sides, here and here, I cut out a little bit and that helps this flap to lay down straight. So let's mark where that's going to be. All right, here, we're just going to trim off this flap and, ah, just, oh wow, my hands are a mess. And then I want to trim the whole thing. So I'm just going to take my scissors and trim this off, trim this whole thing. And then here's the other one. And then we just take that off take that whole thing off and that's just going to help us that's kind of a fine point you don't have to do that but I think that's going to help us to have a flat piece because when you put that in there it's going to it, it won't all adhere you'll see all right so see what I mean this is going in here yeah and this is over here so now I'm going to Take some glue. Now last time I used my art glitter. Actually you could use your tape. You could use whatever you want. I am going to use this glue because it um, has a little bulk to it and I think this might be a little bit small so I'm going to see if this will help stick to the wall a little better. But it's kind of being a pain. I think this is an old bottle. so. And the other th reason I like the glue is that it will give me a little bit more working time. And that's always good when you're trying to kind of finagle a little bit. Come on, glue. Ay, ay, ay. Come on out. All right. It's taking its time. Okay, so I'm just going to slip this down now. It doesn't matter, you know, front, back, wherever. And just kind of ease that in because the glue will... And then if you have to use something to poke it back up, just use your tools. There. Yeah, see? See what I mean? Now it's nice and flat. You could have done it, but it would kind of be poking, poking around. I just like to have them even. And then you can just lay it like that and make sure it's flat. Okay, so now we have our box done, pretty much. We have our little snowman. I think what I'm going to do is ink my background so it has time to dry before we put the snowman on. So what I'm going to do for that is I've just got my, this is a mat board package, and I'm just going to take my blue, I have two inks, these are my um, Clear Snap Blends inks, and this is called Hydrangea, this is uniform, so I'm going to kind of mix them together and just kind of dot them around, and then we're going to add some water. And I'm going to leave some spots that are not even really, you know, I'm going to leave some clear spots. And then I'm going to take another piece of plastic wrap. And I just like this because it, to me it looks like they're very round and I don't want them to go on my thing like that. So I'm going to smush them up and kind of move it around a little bit here. Actually, I think I added too much water. I might have to do that again. 
and this does get a little messy. Yeah, I got too much. Let me try that again. Added too much water. Oh well. Alright, I'm not going to put them away this time. <laughs> and you don't need a whole lot. Alright, let's try this again. That might be a little better. So we're just gonna, it doesn't matter which side. So just take a side and kind of, ooh, that's cool. Ooh, I don't even know if I want to add more, but I kind of do. Oh, I like this better than the other one I did. And it kind of looks like it's missing a little over here. So let's squish that a little. Ooh, that is beautiful. Ah, I love that one. That's way better. This other one was a little bit more uh, watery, but I think that's really going to stand out. I think the snowman's going to stand out a little bit better on that. So let's do the snowman now. And let me clean up my mess first, because I will get that everywhere. We don't need a blue snowman. He's cyanotic. <laughs> so I could be working on a, a sheet here, but I'm just going to can use this thing again. I'm just going to tap out a little bit of gray and I could just use my my blend straight but I think I like the look of the, the stylus a little bit better because I don't want a whole lot of there's my gray. Hmm. I guess this is my gray. All right I already have the mess going. Shoot! <laughs> oh well. Alright, so I'm just tapping on a little bit and then all I'm doing is I'm just going around the edge a little bit just to make that stand out on the against the white. See the last one, I didn't do the background first so I thought, ooh, I better go around the snowman with a color so that it stands out from the gray. but. Then we did a background, but still, I think I like how it looks. So I'm just going to go around here. Now, don't worry about these little holes here in the middle because we're going to cover them with buttons on the snowman and his nose. So you won't even see them in the end. All right. Everybody good? Marbly. I know. I love how that one came out. And it looks like it's not really doing anything, but wait until you see. It does. Now, another thing that we're going to use in this project is our foam squares. And don't be afraid to bump this up as much as you want because I hesitated, but then I thought, why am I doing that? It's going to work fine. So the background, this is going to be the lowest, then that than this. So on this one I'm going to use one layer of foam and you can kind of, you know, turn it how you want it to set. I think that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to put this guy and then I've got a little smudge up here so I'm going to put that at the top because that'll be covered. And then we're going to make just very quickly a little hat for the snowman. And I've got some black. I'm just going to I'm going to use this for a guideline. I just cut a square and uh, then I kind of trimmed it a little bit and then I used a strip to um, put the base of the hat. And then I'm just going to trim it in a little bit so it has a shape to it. It looked too straight when I did the first one. So I'm kind of shaving a little bit off the side here. That looks very tall though. I think that's too big. All right, looks like a soldier hat. Maybe chop a little more off. So this is very, <laughs> very scientific, you can see, <laughs> as is most of what I do. <laughs> All right, and then this is going to be his little brim. I think I'm going to double it around. So I'm going to cut a longer strip. And then I'm going to just glue that here and I am going to use glue for that. Oh shoot, my um, chat stopped advancing. 
should have known. It was too good to be true. I had to say it. <laughs> so I am happy. It's cold out here, like really pretty cold. I went out to take pictures of this guy and it did not have my coat on. All right, so then we'll just fold this, you know, to have like an equal little brim. Yeah, it looks pretty good. And we'll trim it. Now he has a hat. All right, so our snowman's coming together. Now, you may be wondering, how did I get such perfect little circles for this and this? Well, I used my crocodile and I just punched holes. The only thing is they kind of curl, so you have to flatten them back out again, but that's not hard. All right, so I think I'm gonna wait and I'm gonna put him on when I'm ready to assemble. Um, but let me punch my little circles. All right. I can't wish I could see. Hey, Dana Fink, Helen, Caroline, how you doing? Sarah, Lizzie, Simon. Hi, Simon. You have snow, gray snow, but no yellow. That's good. All right. We're going to have the, uh, this is the big hole on the crocodile. So these are going to be the buttons. And sometimes if you, if they pile up, they're a little more curly. So I take them out each time. And I think I did four buttons for the big one, but let's do an extra just in case. And then we'll see, just it doesn't want to come out. Well, let's do another one. Come on out. There we go. All right, then we're going to do a bunch of these little ones because that's going to be a smile and eyes. And then we have to cut a nose for them and color that. These are a little tedious. I mean, you could just take a marker and you could just do them like that, but I kind of got into doing it all in paper just to see if I could, and you can. <laughs> so, and the other, the rest, I'm just gonna show you, but basically we have our box already put together. That was quick. So you could make a whole bunch of these. And, and um, the other thing that I liked was that the um, cards that fit inside, I used the die to make them too. And I'll show you that if I have some paper. I think I do. All right, now here are these big ones. What I wound up doing, it just seemed to take less time. I used a tweezers to get these in position and I just took my plastic and squeezed out a dot of glue. Oh, I can put it anywhere. You know, just so you can uh, dip them in, and that seemed to go a little quicker. Here's my glue pin from Dana Fink. Thank you, Dana. I love it, and you probably saved me a lot of glue. All right, so the tweezers that I'm using, these are reverse tweezers, and they're really fine. They will pick up glue too, though, so you kind of have to be a little careful. But maybe, all right, let's put these on here because we know we're going to use them to cover the holes there. So let's just get a little dot of glue and put that on. And you don't really have to worry. If you get glue, it, it dries pretty clear. Plus, it's white behind it anyway, so don't worry about it. All right, here's another one. Cover that. And then what I did was I took my... This is ThermoWeb Foam Squares, and I use the big ones for the body because it's pretty big. So this one I just glued to the box. So let's see, let's position this so we can see. All right, that goes there. And then this is going to get two layers, or one layer of the foam squares. So let's do that. And then the only thing you have to remember is you want to put the scarf around his neck. So that's how I would do that one. And here's just some fabric that I had and um, I just kind of laid that under there and then I tied it around, you know. So let's glue these down just to 
get this set up here. So this one I'm just going to glue. And this seems like flatter, so I'm going to just set that down. And you could put them to the side if you want, or put them wherever you want. And then just peel these off. Then we'll do the scarf. Then we'll put on his head. Isn't it fun? I haven't done something like this in a long time. All right, there's his body. And then now we're going to do two layers of the foam on his head and his hat. So you have to take these off first. I don't know why I thought, I can't put two layers of foam. <laughs> why not? Come on. I have like one nail left. All right. Oh, two at a time. I really only need one. It's not supporting a whole lot. And then I'm going to have one for his hat. Uh, actually, I could do two for his hat. So that's bumped up the same. But let me do a scarf first. I wish I could see you guys. It's fun to make snow people. I know, it is. And they last longer than like a Christmas tree, you know, because it snows all through. So I'm just going to kind of measure this out and tuck it under. That should be good. And then what's nice about this, I actually upholstered a couch in this a long time ago. And I have tons of it left. Um, you just pull these threads out and that kind of frays the end. So I'm just going to leave this in here and then we'll put his head up here. And his hat. Might need two. Let's just do another one. These foam squares are pretty handy. Use the point of your tweezers. I should. You know what? I don't do anything the way I'm supposed to. <laughs> I know all this stuff, but I just don't do it. All right. There. He's cute, isn't he? We could tie this now. It's getting done. Because then it's also good so you can see like where uh, his mouth is going to be with the scarf already done. And I think I did tack it down with some glue just because he kept popping up. So I think I'll do that. And that'll keep it there. I can trim this if I want later. There. It's pretty cool. All right. Okay. So now we want to add another little... I know I should do this better, but it's going to work. Um, I'll add one button here. I think that looks all right. I don't even think it needs another one. All right, let's do his eyes. See, maybe if I did these with a hole punch, they might be better. So these are kind of bent. but And then there's his little eyes. They each seem to have their own little character. These are closer than the other guys. All right, we forgot to do our... All right, we can use a piece from this. This is the leftover. So let's just make a little nose. I don't know, that one looks pretty big. See, we just want to cover that up. Oh, well, that's all right. You know, he may not even need a mouth. All right, and then I'm just going to color this in. I think I started with red, and then I added yellow. I also have that melon color, but I don't even think I need that. I'm just going to go with stop and sunshine. And you can also you can paint your nails with it nice orange little nose. So you can go around the edges so there's no white. And we're just going to glue that on. 
And I don't know, maybe we don't even need a mouth. What do you think? Vote on his mouth. Do we need to do one or no? <laughs> you really, you could say it was tucked under his scarf. I can't see. Hi, Linda Gorman. What do you think? Works great. Wendy Jean, I like to use the tip of your small scissors to take the backing off the foam tape. That's a good idea. Chris Hull, how you doing, Chris? No mouth, no mouth. Yes, a mouth. Yes, a mouth. All right, somebody break the tie. No, you don't think so. <laughs> it's that three no's and two yeses. No mouth. All right. All right. I think he's cute like that. You can imply a mouth. You can imagine what he would look like with a mouth. And he's not going to talk back to you. You got to love that. All right. So the next thing I did was I, these are already pre-cut, which you will be very happy to hear. <laughs> and I made kind of a little wreath around his head and just kind of laid these on here and trimmed them if I needed to. So this one will probably tuck under. So I'm going to cut this off. You could just tear it if you wanted. And then a little bit of glue to go around. And I, only, I just did like here, 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 you know. I don't need to go crazy. It's not going anywhere. Just kind of aim for like a circle shape. And you can bend it if you want, you know, to go more round like that because it's not. And then another one here. And this is from the Floral Arch set. And it has the word friend, which we'll do in a minute. And it's moving right along, don't you think? Isn't he cute? And this little guy, we could go, the, yeah, we'll have to go that way. All right, so it's like two and a half of these that you need. Okay, so there's that. Cute, it's not exactly a circle, but close enough. Okay, then we need his little arms, and for that I used my uh, zip dry again because it has a little bulk to it, and I can tuck that in there and know that it's kind of nestled. So this is from a tree outside. You kind of have to look for these. That one's got a lot of things on it. You might have to trim it. That's all right. I think somebody is here. Not sure who. Holly's having a party. <laughs> All right, we don't want to give him super duper long arms, but I think that one's going to be like that. And this one, let's see. I don't like to leave them hanging off too much because it will break. And these are green right now, but they're not going to stay green. They're going to get brittle. So I'm just going to trim them a little bit and stick them in there and they should be okay. Oh yeah, there's like some party going on up there. <laughs> All right, so there's another arm. <laughs> He's cute. All right. You kind of have to hold them in for a minute. All right, what are we missing? Friend. All right, so we have one of those already cut. It's red. And what I did for this was, I did it in an angle and just kind of trimmed where this started. Now see, this guy is over a little further, so... Hmm. Yeah, we can still do that. I just trimmed off the and it looks like they're attached but they're not these are really fine so just a little dot is all you need and like I said this dries clear so don't worry about it if you and then we have to figure out where is the end going so you line it up right. Uh, 
Okay, close enough. Hmm. No. Come on. Don't do this to me at the last minute. <laughs> Holly's friend is probably going, who is that maniac down in the basement? <laughs> All right, well, this is, you know, this will have to be to a good friend because they won't care. <laughs> They'll know it was done on a live. All right, close enough. That's good. Cute. There it is. That's it, guys. And then I just took some ribbon and threaded it through here, you know, one of these holes, whichever one, and just tied knots to keep them in. And let's see what else. Here are the cards. I don't know if I showed you. Now, something to think about. When you want to get them out, because these are here, it's a little tricky, so I might have maybe should have done this first. Oh, and the other thing that I did was I added these little dots. You know, I'm not sure where they are. Oh, here they are. This is in one of these little bling books. I don't know what you call it, but it was from Queen and Company. I thought they were really cute, and I love the little book. So what it is, they're just these little sticker things, which some of them stuck. So I should probably get them out of there. Anyway, I just took them and uh, just stuck them down randomly to give a little bit. So they look like snow, was my thought. And that's it. Just stick them down. Kind of fun. Wherever you want. Don't need a whole lot. Oh, one there. Wow, I can't believe we really did this. And then how long? Not long at all. Man, I'm on a roll. I gotta say. <laughs> what do you think of that? <laughs> Lisa, you finished addressing your cards. Oh, you're good. You are very good. All right, well, that's where they go. Isn't this cute, though? Look at all these little blings in different colors. Mmm. Okay, so let's put our glue caps on. And, oh, I'm behind stupid comments. Why don't they go down? All right. Love this project. Oh, thanks, Charlotta. Oh, good. I'm glad everybody likes it. It was fun. I just sat down today. I'm like, I need... You know what happened? I was watching Candy Cooper yesterday, and she had a little box, and she put a, made a snowman and put them on there. And I thought, oh, you know, I bet we could make one out of the pocket notebook. So we did. And I like the idea that now we have the option of, you know, closing off the bottom. You see how easy. That's the first one I did and better. This one I messed up, but, you know, you get the idea of how it works. But you can put all kinds of little things in here, little tags or whatever you're collecting. These are some of the cards that I... I started out good, I made that one, and then I kind of went downhill, <laughs> haven't finished them all. But they fit, and I could put a pack of uh, four in here, plus I think I could fit the envelopes. I think the six and three eighths inch ones will work. So, and I cut them using my die, let me show you, I used my pocket notebook die, and it's, you know, it's meant for the insert book, but there, this is what we made our cover with, and this is where we cut our pages. So all I did was I took a piece of paper, folded it in half, I put the fold over here, and then laid my page here. So when I was done, I got a nice little card, just like that. And you can take a piece of washi tape and lay that down where you want all of the ends to wind up, so they all stay the same size. So, it would be perfect to hang on someone's door with tea, cocoa, or candy. Laura, it would. It would be like a little May Day, but it would be Christmas. Wouldn't that be fun to give it and then leave and make them wonder who, who was that, leaving stuff, presents? I love that idea. 
So what I did anyway, because it was a little tricky to get them in and out, I just made like a little folder for them. And then you could even put a message on here, and I thought it'd be cute to put a little pull tab. I just didn't get to it, but I think that's a fun idea. And then you can just, when you need to pull them all out, you don't have to mess with it. You just go like that, okay? So, well, thanks, Gina. You could find the ribbon around the outside to prevent the ribbon getting in the way of the cards. Yes. You mean like to put it... Um, Wait, you could find the ribbon. Wind the ribbon around the outside? Yes, that's true. That would be a good idea. Yeah, then you wouldn't have to mess with that. Yeah, it's all a work in progress. You know, you start it and you're like, mm, should have done it this way, but oh well, it works. <laughs> but so I'm glad I had a chance to do another one because now I have two and I wish I'd had it for my gift exchange <laughs> at the, at the uh, book bags, but they like the book too. So, anyway, that's what I have. So I think I'm going to go up and, and join the party, whatever's happening in my kitchen, <laughs> and see who's up there. Might be my nephew. I don't know. So um, I might be doing a couple extra videos, and I might do them in the fan club because I've had a couple ideas, and I want to try them out. So I thought, well, maybe you'd like to try them with me. These are some of those little like cards that you get on one sheet you know you get like 12 of them so I just made like a little tiny card because I thought it'd be a cute gift card so you could put them in there too or you could take these and I wanted to also show you I made them the other day this is what I had in mind and I actually did it so I made a bunch of the little gift card holders using the well, I don't have it out, but it's the gift card and label, um, gift card folder and labels, number two, available in my Etsy store, as are the pocket notebook and a bunch of other stuff, okay? So, make sure to post in the fan club. Uh, we're having a contest going on right now. Uh, first of all, if you're not a member of the fan club, go over to Eileen Hall Fan Club on Facebook. It's a group, and you can um, join. Just answer the questions because we've got some people trying to get in that are not really, I don't know who they are. But anyway, we, we just want to make sure that you know what you're doing <laughs> if you want to join. And go over and join, and then you'll see that we have a Christmas challenge going on right now. And... Um, so we're, we're not even asking that you have finished products, projects, but if you do, that's good. But if you just want to show us what you're working on, we would love to see. So head on over. And then at the end, we're going to have um, a giveaway, a random giveaway. So uh, we love seeing what you're making and doing. And come on down. So that is all I have today. I think I'm going to be here on Tuesday. I may be headed back up to New York. I don't know. I don't want to, but... It's getting close. The house was getting inspected today. And uh, anyway, peek in first in case they are washing up. <laughs> yeah, I better. Don't. Oh, don't forget to mention our giveaway. Mitsiana, I already did. I read your mind. <laughs> well, thank you, Karen Rogers. Yeah, hey, Mitsiana, can you put a link to the Etsy store? Just in case. I also want to tell you, I have some new stuff coming into the Etsy store. These are... Um, I actually use these. I'm going to do a live and show you how I use them, but I want to put them in there. So if anyone's interested, uh, I'll be posting something hopefully later. Um, we'll see. I almost have a new car. So I've been working. We've been out every night looking for a car and I'm looking at a Pacifica. I have very specific things. I need one ideally that could tow the trailer because um, Scott, uh, Big Daddy is breaking down. Check engine light is on. It's not good. So I'm thinking if I could get a Pacifica van that has stow and go, that's what I want when I go to the beach. And I can also tow the trailer with it and put a bunch of kids in there. I can do everything with that. So we're um, going out looking every night and it was freezing last night. Anyway, I think we're getting close, so I'll let you know. I'll put a picture if I ever get it. So that's uh, <laughs> it's my latest job looking for a car. 
So anyway, thanks for coming, everybody. I'll see you Tuesday, and uh, have a great weekend, and I hope you're doing well with your holiday preparations, and um, we'll see you soon, okay? Thanks for watching. Bye.